Hi, my name is Hardy Rupan, and I am the man in the wild. And in today's episode, we will be taking a look and learning some facts about five creatures that can be found in Trinidad. One which can be found only in Trinidad. But before we move on to the video, I would like to thank each and every one of you for supporting my channel. For all who have subscribed and all of those who view my videos. We are approaching that 4,000 subscriber mark and I thank you all for helping me to reach here. And now, let's take a look at these five creatures that can be found in Trinidad. Please consider subscribing to support my channel. Named after the Aztec Emperor Montezula Oropendola, this beautiful tropical bird is native to Trinidad. Locally called the corn bird, this beautiful tropical bird has a long yellow tail, a beautiful yellow beak, black brownish feathers, and two beautiful blue eyes. The male usually grows around 50 centimeters long, that is about 20 inches. The female is smaller. The female grows about 38 centimeters long, which is about 15 inches. The average weight of the cornbird is about half a pound. They feed mainly on fruits, pawpaws, bananas, etc. But they also complement their diet with insects, termites, ants, sometimes even grasshoppers. The cornbird lives in social groups, usually in numbers between 20 to 150. They live in the canopy where they build long hanging nests, approximately two feet long, where each female would lay two eggs in the nest that takes about 15 days to hatch. The dominant male usually mates with most of these females and produce the offsprings. In the late afternoon, you can see flocks of oropendolas flying overhead as they travel from their feeding place back to their nesting area. Their flocks can number in the hundreds. The oropendola or cornbird has a lifespan of about 35 years. Living among these tall grasses and lily pads of this waterway is the purple gallinule. Locally called the blue hen, this beautiful water bird is native to Trinidad. The blue hen grows to a length of about 10 inches, which is approximately 26 centimeters. They can weigh between half to three quarter pounds depending on the environment and the food that they find. The blue hen is omnivorous, which means they eat both plants and animals. They would eat almost anything that would fit in their beak. Beetles, dragonflies, small fish, eggs, larvae, moths, butterflies, leaves, flowers, even fruits, anything that would pretty much fit in their beak they would eat. With their long yellow legs and extra long toes, they can walk on lily pads very comfortably, but they can also swim just like a duck in the swamps. The blue hen lays approximately two to six eggs, which takes about 18 days to hatch. The young blue hen do take approximately two years to mature and develop their full colors. The average lifespan of these birds is approximately 22 years. Although these birds can fly, they tend to prefer to hide 
if they sense danger. The problem is, they would usually stick their head behind a leaf, leaving their entire body exposed, believing that they are hiding. The Trinidad brown squirrel climbs a coconut tree, gnaws away at the coconut, and starts eating its insides. Trinidad is a tropical country. We have only two seasons, the wet season and the dry season, which means fruit trees produce fruits all year round, and squirrels are very well fed. They do not have to bury their nuts or seeds for the winter time because in Trinidad we have no winter. Squirrels are rodents. Their front teeth continuously grow. So gnawing away at the hard coconut shell is one way to control the growth of the teeth. The gestation period for a squirrel is usually around 30 days. The babies are born blind and the mother has to care for them for a period of about three months before they are ready to leave the nest. The Trinidad squirrel reproduce once a year. They usually do this in the early part of the year. Around the month of April, the babies are ready to leave their nest. The baby squirrels appear to have a greener sheen to their fur when the sunlight hits them. This is most likely for the purpose of camouflage. Although very cute, squirrels in Trinidad are considered as pests as they can do great damages to the coconut estates. And being a tropical country that has lots of coconut estates, there is lots of damage to be done. Even though they are considered as pests, there are many persons in Trinidad who keep them as pets. Despite being pests, squirrels are very cute, very intelligent, and very acrobatic. This makes them very interesting to watch. The praying mantis or god horse is a predatory insect found in Trinidad. They vary in size, color, and camouflage. When on the hunt, these creatures display patience and agility when needed. The praying mantis are not scavengers. They are hunters. They only eat live food, which means their survival depends on their hunting skills. The praying mantis would select its hunting grounds and patiently wait for prey to come within reach. This is a life and death game of patience that can last sometimes for hours. This praying mantis is hunting houseflies. It has to stay as motionless as possible to get its prey to come as close as possible for it to grab hold of it. Houseflies are very swift and this praying mantis skills has to be 100% if it is to be successful. Praying mantis has very good 3D eyesight. Their depth perception is excellent and this aids with their hunting skills. I have been filming this praying mantis for almost an hour now and it has not given away its position or moved from its hunting location. Determined to catch a housefly. Wow! A near miss. As I turned off my camera, believing this praying mantis would not be successful, a housefly came up to it and snatched it caught its dinner. They usually start consuming their prey from its head, consuming every part of the insect that they caught. Unlike other insects whose head is fixed to their body, the praying mantis head has the ability to move from side to side. 
they can turn their head and gaze in a different direction. The praying mantis head can move at an angle of 180 degrees. This beautiful mutt produces a dangerous offspring that is only found in Trinidad. The Hypercoms trinitatus was so named because of its discovery in Trinidad. In 2019, a group of scientists published a document on this creature that we locally call the Chini. Its furry coat is actually toxic spines that if comes into contact with your skin will result in an uncomfortable itch and rash. The chini is a moth caterpillar. It has an insatiable appetite. It loves green leafy vegetables. Pak choy, cabbage, lettuce, they would eat everything off of it. In this clip, you will see me harvesting some organic pak choy that I have grown. Because I grow my food organically, I use no pesticide. The chini finds this irresistible. Green leafy vegetables with no pesticide? Wow! This is a relatively small one, about half the length and half the width of the fully grown ones. Knowing that the chini would be attracted to my green vegetables, I usually inspect my plants daily remove any of them that I find and place them in the pasture next door. Because they do eat various types of grass as well, they do survive very comfortably there. They move around a lot in search of food. If they find it in abundance, they will settle there and feast. If not, they consume whatever is there and move on. Because they move around a lot, they sometimes venture into your homes. And as many Trinidadians know, if unseen and comes into contact with them, it ends up with a very discomforting itch and rash. And there we have it. Five videos of creatures that can be found in Trinidad. I would like to thank you again for supporting my channel. If you would like to support my channel and you have not yet subscribed, please click the subscribe button down below. If you would like to see more videos like this, click the like button and leave a comment. I'll see you on the next adventure. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to support my channel